You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are continuing our conversation in the Set Apart to Serve series today, and we get to talk with educators. Also, students are alumni of Lutheran education institutions as well. Um, It's a really neat story. So we're heading to Indiana for the story today. All right. I love that we we get to travel virtually. It's true. We get to go all over the place. Thanks to Concordia (laughs) University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, Alicia Levitt. She's the Director of Academic Excellence and the Interim Executive Director for the Lutheran Schools Partnership located in Northeast Indiana. Alicia, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Also joining us today, Jacob Pennekamp, Head of School for Concordia Lutheran High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Jacob, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Yes. Hello, Andy and Sarah. Well, we are interested in hearing your stories, your path to serving the church, particularly in Lutheran education. Let's start with your story, Alicia. What do you do at, what's your role in Lutheran education today? So Fort Wayne is a unique community. Northeast Indiana is a a place where we have lots of Lutheran churches and schools. And I have the pleasure of serving uh, an organization that supports the Lutheran High School here in Fort Wayne, as well as 18 elementary schools and 32 early childhood programs in Northeast Indiana. And I primarily serve teachers with curriculum and instruction support, help them to think about how to solve problems. We have a cohort of instructional coaches that I work with, and it's great to be able to work with teachers in all kinds of different schools. We have rural schools and small communities, and we have urban schools in the heart of the city. So it's a really neat little microcosm of Lutheran education. And we're going to talk more about how you and this partnership serves those children and families in Fort Wayne. But first, Jacob, what is, what do you get to do in your vocation? Right. I have the privilege of serving as the head of school, which is essentially CEO of Concordia Lutheran High School. Concordia Lutheran High School is a school that we currently have a population of 620 students, but typically we're in the seven to 800 range and we're growing back towards that. And I get to serve alongside that group of elementary administrators and enjoy very much working with Alicia and that team as we support each other and families in Christian education here in Northeast Indiana. Now, Andy mentioned when he was introducing you that that both of you are products of Lutheran education. So we want to hear your stories of how you were brought into this church work vocation. Jacob, what is your story? How did you, what was your path into church work? It's a great story. And it's probably a very typical story, but I never wanted to be an educator. I thought, I thought in order to do something special, you needed to have a job where you built something. And so when I was going through high school, and it happens to be that I did uh, uh, attend Concordia Lutheran High School as a student. My dad was a second career a seminarian at the time. But I, I, I visited a couple of the schools in, in the area that have architecture engineering, so Purdue and Valparaiso and Ball State. But I came back from those visits fairly dissatisfied. And like most young people, you go to the people you trust the most for advice. And often that was my teachers and coaches as well as my parents. And it was funny how God spoke through them in ways and said, you know why you're not satisfied is because you're supposed to go to one of the Concordias and be a teacher. And that shock to the system was was overcome by just the encouragement I received from the people I needed to speak truth to me at that point in my life. And uh, our paths kind of overlapped, I think, at one point. I don't know if we ever actually met one another. One of the Concordias that you went to was Concordia, at the time, Concordia University River Forest, Illinois, right. correct? Right. And so it would have been close. Now, Alicia, did your path cross with Jacob at Concordia River Forest? My path crossed with both of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm in the middle of the two of you class-wise. I was class of 97 for my undergrad. Yeah. And I was 96. Aha. Uh-huh. So I transferred in as nine at, and graduated in 97 as an undergrad. And then Sarah was there <laughs> say, a little bit to... later. Yes. I don't think our paths <laughs> yeah. No, I was class of 2010, but we won't talk about that. You could have been one of our students. No, let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Alicia, tell us your story, how you ended up on this path to serving as a church worker. Sure. I grew up in Wilton, Iowa. It's a pretty small town in eastern Iowa, and I attended Zion Lutheran School from pre-K to eight. It was a really small school. There were five kids in my grade, 
And fifth through eighth grade was in one classroom. And our teacher really encouraged us to help one another. And I think the beginnings of I might want to be a teacher were when I got to work with classmates and younger kids in school. And then I went to Concordia River Forest, got my elementary ed bachelor's degree after some further encouragement, especially from my grandma. But I will say that my dad's family had a number of church workers in it, and that was always a respected profession in our family. And when people encouraged me toward that, I never felt like it was something I wouldn't want to do. So God spoke to me through a lot of family members and teachers and, and people like that. So let's talk about the formation aspect of this. Alicia, you mentioned that people, or well, both of you mentioned that people were encouraging you along the way and and telling you that this is something that that is worthy of your your time and your effort to be in a church work vocation. So now that you are on the other side of this, you are those people that are encouraging young people to consider church work vocations. So what role do both of you play in forming and recruiting youth to pursue church work vocations? Alicia, let's start with you. Well, I think the first thing that's important for me personally is to speak well of what I do and to encourage others that this is um, a career path that God uses to bring joy to your life and that he pri- provides through your needs. Right now in my work, I have the privilege of working with a group that is intentionally trying to encourage future church workers. We're calling ourselves champions for church workers. And we try to encourage those that we have now, the teachers that we have now, how can we encourage them and fill their cups and help them to find joy in their work? But then how do I identify students in our classrooms now who we see as awesome potential future church workers? And how do we encourage all students in our schools to think about how they're going to serve the church in the future, whether or not that's their vocation? So we're working intentionally together, Jacob here at Concordia High School, and then we have one champion in each of our elementary schools as well. And we're meeting regularly. And now also I'm excited that we are connecting with the very large group of retired church workers in the Fort Wayne area. So we've had our first meeting with them to find out how can we connect to you to help encourage these young people. That's a brilliant idea. And then we'll talk a little bit more about that in the second half of the program, how you're continuing to grow that Champions for Church Workers. Jacob, let's let's hear about how you get to encourage and and work toward recruiting youth to consider full-time church work. Yeah, so going back to my, my story of how I came into education and how I wanted to build things, what I didn't realize at the time is that in education, we get to build lives and build faith. And so, and where that begins for me, I'll start with this, is in my own household. So my wife, Sarah, and I, also a Concordia, Chicago, Concordia River Forest graduate, we're blessed with five children. And and again, I think as Alicia spoke, being able to show my children through positive reflections and, and the way they interacted with the school and they saw me interact with the school, he invited them to think about being a professional church worker. And then beyond that, I give a lot of credit to, to my wife's parents and my parents who are both in church work fields. Their influence on my kids' lives is substantial. And then lastly, just like with me, having teachers that you can just see as you look back how their fingerprints are just all over my kids in areas that they have strength. They poured into them, so I'm really proud to say, and not and not by um, not by heavy handedness. Uh, I have three uh, of my children are at uh, one of the Concordias I won't name and are going into church work to graduate this year and are receiving first placements. Really excited about that. So proud of them. And then my fourth daughter who is graduating this year from our high school is also committed to a church work career. And so I don't know about the fifth yet. She has a heavy lean that way. She loves looking up to her parents. So it begins, I think, in the household. That was a long story to get to that. That can be one place where this starts. But more than that, it's, it's as Alicia said, it's identifying, knowing kids, the tap on the shoulder, and just putting those thought, seeds of thought into their minds have been one of the most powerful ways. And then I've had a chance to be an administrator for a long time, being able to just have have serving the church, whether it's full-time or even as as a lay person later in life, we we are all servants of the church, and and just having that culture built into how our teachers are interacting uh, with students and how they're modeling being in worship with their students, it, it culture is really powerful. You you seem to be uh, quite content being 
uh, a servant in the church, a, a church worker as well. And I think that that attitude that you that you express in how you speak about what you get to do and what other church workers get to do, I'm certain makes a difference in how your children and, and other youth perceive church work as well. If you're speaking about it joyfully and and reflecting that, don't you think that makes a difference in, in how they perceive church work and, and considering pursuing it as well? Absolutely. And and again, I'm not disparaging anyone, but I've I've been in meetings with teachers where they have openly said, I've talked worked hard to kid, convince my kids not to be a teacher because because that's how they feel. And and certainly, you know, those are those are circumstances too. But you're right. I think I think being able to show the joyful ways in which we serve and and being able to have that kind of an influence on a on a student in that life is has been significant as it was and I know Alicia's story is similar to mine. Those were the people. It's it's your teachers, your coaches you turn to for advice in all forms of life. And how awesome is it in Lutheran schools, especially, but in our churches as well, where there are Christian influences to be able to point people towards a way to serve uh, professionally. We're talking with Jacob Pennekamp, head of school at Concordia Lutheran High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Alicia Levitt, Director of Academic Excellence and Interim Executive Director for the Lutheran Schools Partnership in Northeast Indiana. We'll learn more about some of the specific programs and and ways that they go about encouraging young people to consider church work at both of their institutions as well. We'll talk about that in just a moment right here on The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live Uncommon. Sharing our faith can sometimes be hard, especially face-to-face. That's one of the reasons KFUO is here, to share God's Word globally on your behalf and to equip you with the knowledge, confidence, and words to share Jesus yourself. This share make a gift to KFUO Radio so we can continue sharing Christ to the world. Donate online at kfuo.org slash share That's kfuo.org slash share Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're talking with friends uh, learning about uh, encouraging young people to consider church work as part of our Set Apart to Serve series here on The Coffee Hour. We're talking with Jacob Pennekamp, head of school at Concordia Lutheran High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Alicia Levitt, Director of Academic Excellence and Interim Executive Director for the Lutheran Schools Partnership in Northeast Indiana. Jacob, you were talking about the ways that that you get to serve at Concordia Lutheran High School and the relationships, even within your own house, and how you talk about being an educator and a church worker and how that makes a difference. Tell us about the the opportunities that students have at Concordia Lutheran High School to consider church work, particularly looking at at Lutheran education as an opportunity. I understand that you have a, a dual credit opportunity for students there. Right. At Concordia Lutheran High School about four years ago, one, this helps us to meet some state graduation requirements. So we need we need students to have pathways towards a, a full diploma. And so this was a way to accomplish that. But we took it a step further and developed what we call an education professions course. It is a capstone to a couple other classes that lead up to it. But essentially, you could equate it as a dual credit class to almost like an intro to education. You might take your freshman year at one of the universities. In that class, students are introduced to learning processes, the changing trends in education, education technology, a little dabble into curriculum and even some instructional practices. They have to write a lesson plan. But under the careful guidance of of really one of our most skillful teachers, especially when it comes to social, he's he's an active recruiter in a lot of ways in our school to things. But Chris Murphy, who is also a Concordia University (laughs) Chicago graduate, has done a great job of developing and recruiting. And so in the three years that we've offered this class, uh, I'm looking at my numbers here real quick. We've had roughly, looks like around 52 students participate. And of that, over 80% at least graduated with identifying an education or church career uh, as an interest area. 
So it's one of the ways, and again, we have students who certainly go on to teaching without ever taking that, that course with us, but it's one of the ways to elevate that as even a potential future vocation. And because we're a Lutheran school, we can do that within the context of what it would be to serve the church. And so in that group have been DCEs and pastoral candidates and deaconess candidates as well. And here's another really exciting stat I just had. In the last three years of our own Concordia High School graduates, we've had over 18 student teachers, student teach. Those are the graduates of ours. They've gone to one of the universities and they've student taught in the last three years. So again, it's, it's, it's an intentional way, but it also helps to just highlight that that's an opportunity to serve. What a great way for students to learn about the vocations, the church work vocation, and, and to, to see a little snippet of what it's like to be a teacher, to dip their toes in before they go to university. And that the, those are really great numbers that you shared as well, the impact that that is having on young people who, who are able to think about this now. Alicia, you talked briefly before about the Champions for Church Workers program. Tell us more about how this program works and, and how it encourages young people. So uh, Chris Murphy's education professions class really was kind of an idea sparker for us. I, Chris asks, asks educators and others to come in and speak to his class each year, and I've had the privilege of doing that. And I've sort of used my time with them to share my own story and some exciting things about working in ministry, but also to ask them some questions about what do they have as perceived barriers and what are what are the things that they need encouragement with? What do they want to know more about? And have all this information, what are we going to do with it? So a few other like-minded educators who wanted to encourage future church workers and I sat down and came up with a plan to start a little group of um, people from our schools that would be intentional about this. So we have a spreadsheet. We're trying to collect some data. We are tracking some kids that we've nudged. So when a teacher sees something in a student in their elementary school, when that student matriculates up here to the high school, now the high school teachers know, hey, someone's already started talking to this student. Maybe I can continue to encourage this student as well. So that kind of encouragement has been one piece of it and trying to be intentional about communicating between the schools about what we see. We've also been thinking about how we can help our students to see what the different church work professions are. So I mentioned I went to a really small school and I was in a small town. The only church workers that we had were teachers and a pastor. I didn't know what a DCE was until I went to Concordia River Forest. And so we have similar churches and schools here in our community, and we thought, how can we help them to see what the different opportunities are for serving professionally in the church? So we've been blessed to work with Lutheran Ministries Media. You, some may know them from their program Worship Anew, which is shown worldwide, but they have been gracious to work with us to help create some videos that we can show to students this year. So we identified a pastor, a deaconess a director of parish music, some educators, a variety of church workers in our community that could talk a little bit about what they do. They create, they came and created some videos that show the work that they get to do. And then students can see that in their own school, like, hey, that's really cool. They're doing that here in our area. Or, wow, I've never heard of a director of parish music. I wonder what that's like. I love music. So those videos are still in production. We have the first few available for our schools to use. And And we pray that that will be one more way that this group can help to encourage these kids to think about what that would look like. You mentioned earlier that you've also connected with retired church workers in your community. Tell us more about their engagement with with Champions for Church Workers. Well, that's brand new. We've actually just had one launch type of a meeting a couple of months ago. But boy, that is a group that has tremendous untapped potential in our community. So much knowledge, so much fervor for the Lord and a desire to connect and serve. So they gave us oodles of ideas. Next step is we we met with just a small group of them and we're hoping that we can connect with them to create some ideas that individual churches and schools can have as sort of idea sparkers. So have you thought about connecting retirees to your students as prayer partners 
or, you know, sponsors of confirmands or something like that. They're not always new ideas, just ideas maybe not all places have caught on to yet. So sharing all those ideas and providing the resources to put them together. But then also we've seen that some of them have the maybe skill and ability to be mentors to current teachers, principals, and others working in our in our ministries right now. So a mentoring program is also really high on the short list right now. Jacob, what are some other ways other than the dual degree program? You mentioned that was just one of the ways that you're able to encourage young people to consider church work. What are some of the other ways that you're able to do that at Concordia? Well, lots of high schools uh, might host a college fair. Uh, we went a little bit more specific and and ha- hosted a Concordia University System Fair, again, with partnership with uh, Alicia at uh, the Lutheran School Partnership. Very successful event this fall. Um, many students came in through the day and some families then came back in the evening. Opportunity, and we invited all the universities and seminaries to be present. Uh, most were able to ascend in admissions or set up a, a table at least. And really, really important and good conversations happened there. And again, that that may be someone steering themselves uh, towards church work career, or it might even just be to attend a, a solid Lutheran university for something in medicine or or otherwise. So, and we, and we're also blessed to be in a in a town where there is a seminary, and so the Christ Academy um, that the um, Concordia Theological Seminary here in Fort Wayne hosts also does uh, a university uh, college fair as well. So, there's really two times a year where our community. Uh, has an exposure to what the Concordia University system uh, can provide. It sounds like you, both of you, Jacob and Alicia, get to partner together and work together on a a lot of things, a lot of opportunities to encourage young people to consider church work vocations. What is it like being able to have this kind of partnership, Alicia, to to be able to to interact and work with fellow church workers, but also to work together to to carry out the, the work the Lord has given you? I would say that is absolutely the best part of my job. I feel incredibly blessed to be able to work with educators from such a wide variety of schools. You know, it's challenging to try to support schools with curriculum and instruction when they all have different ways of doing things, but it's also exciting to bring them together. We have different groups from within our schools, the champions being one of them, but we have curriculum leaders and principals and others that meet together on a regular basis and get to support each other, hold each other up, share ideas. Um, That's what teachers do really well, right? We take other people's ideas and we tweak them and make them our own. And it provides them an opportunity and a place to do that. So it is a tremendous blessing to be able to work together uh, in this good work that we do. Jacob, what does it mean for you to to be able to partner with other schools and with the, the Lutheran Schools Partnership as well? Yeah, we're real blessed in this community to have the network that we do. And I think what that allows us is is really everyone has good intentions of this, but who has the time to add another thing to the list to imagine and then and then even further to carry it out? That's one of the advantages we have is with the network we have, we can both imagine and we can separate out the duties to actually carry it out. And really, I want to give credit to Alicia. Um, she has incredible administrative gifts uh, as well as innovation. Um, and she's helped to move what, what as a principal, would have been good ideas forward. And what we're hoping is, is that conversations like this, as well as with Set Apart to Serve, that we can more easily allow them to be replicated. We've already, we've already kind of walked through what works and what doesn't and what are some of the pitfalls so that that what can be done then in an individual building, in an individual location is something that is is easier to replicate. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you both for spending some time with us today, sharing about how, how the Lord has blessed you in the work that you get to do and getting to be a part of encouraging young people to consider church work today. Our guests, Alicia Levitt, Director of Academic Excellence and Interim Executive Director for the Lutheran Schools Partnership. Alicia, thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you for having me and thank you for what you're doing to help all of us hear other great ideas. And Jacob Pennekamp, head of school for Concordia Lutheran High School, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Jacob, thank you so much for being our guest. My pleasure, Andy and Sarah. Thanks for having us. You can learn more about Set Apart to Serve by visiting lcms.org slash SAS. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth.
The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.